Before we begin the divine country, I want to explain so that we don't have any more problems. If you're coming to receive for the communion, you need to come as close to me as possible. Look up at the beautiful state of our Lord and open your mouth as if you are yelling to say hello to Jesus. If your mouth is not wide enough, I will not give you communion. Because the proper way for you to give you communion is to take this food with some of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and turn it in your mouth. If your mouth is not open wide enough, I cannot do that and I will not give you communion because I cannot afford to have anything for communion. I'm sorry to do this, but it's the only way that we burn because we all want to do things that are Please remember, and if you're very tall, then you're easy. Because I'm not that tall. Sure. So please keep that in mind. Everybody will please stand. We will begin the worship of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry, you're a Leslie.
Blessed is Andrews of the holy saints now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Wisdom let us attend a long morning I showed one heart that in mercy my leaking out my hand on come let us worship and fall down before Christ our King and Lord Save us O Son of God
with thee, my son, the sanction worthy of full acceptance. For to this end we toil and strive, because we have set our hope on the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity, till I come, attend to the reading of the public, reading of scripture, to preaching, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that you have, which was given to you by prophetic utterance when the council of elders laid hands upon you. Practice these duties, devote yourself to them, so that all may see your progress.
most of you know I have characteristics already. Greetings, Lord of God, O Lord, God and Savior Jesus Christ, proclaim by the Holy Evangelist Saint
strength, the Lord is my firm foundation, my refuge, and my deliverer. I will not be more than my strength. The Lord is my firm foundation, my refuge, and my deliverer. I will not be more than my strength. The Lord is my firm foundation, my refuge, and my deliverer. The
thee, O oh God. I thank thee, O oh Lord my God, that thou hast not rejected me, a sinner, but has accounted me worthy to become a communicant of the holy mysteries. I thank thee that thou hast accounted me the unworthy, worthy to partake of thine immaculate and heavenly gifts. Throw master who loves mankind, who did both die for us and rise again, and did the style of honesty thy terrible and life-giving mysteries for the benefiting and sanctification of our souls and bodies. Grant that they may be for me also, unto the healing of soul and body, unto the averting of everything contrary thereto, unto the enlightenment of the eyes of my heart, unto the peace of my spiritual powers, unto faith and principle, unto love and faith, unto fulfilling of wisdom, unto the keeping of thy commandments, unto growth of thy divine grace, and the attainment of thy kingdom, that by them preserved in thy holiness, I may ever remember thy grace, and henceforth but not unto myself, but unto thee, our master and benefactor. And thus, when this life is ended in the hope of eternal life, I may attain unto everlasting rest, where the voice of those who keep festivals unceasing, and the delight of those who behold the ineffable glory of thy countenance is boundless. If thou art the true desire and unutterable joy of those who love thee, O Christ our God, and all creation giveth thee forever, Amen. May thy holy body be unto me for life eternal, and thy precious blood unto remission of my sins. May this Eucharist be unto me for joy, health, and gladness. And at thy dread second coming, make me a sinner, worthy to stand at the right hand of thy glory, through the intercession of thy immaculate mother of all thy saints. Glory to thee, O God. Glory to thee, O God. Glory to thee, O Christ our God, and our hope. Glory to thee. Amen. Him the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, I ask that you would send the word that you want given to these your faithful children, who are sinning like me, that we might all be edified and come closer to you, and to know the direction that you are pouring us to in this life and in this. Pray the most holy mother, the Pope, the Saint Virgin Mary, and all that our saints need to live in the kingdom, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. If you'd like to take out one of the Bibles that are in the Racks of the Pews, you can turn to page 909. In the 19th chapter of the Gospel of our Lord, of our St. Luke, according to our Lord, the third verse reads, And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was short of stature. But Alaba and Yara Yesua men who were. ولم يفطر من الجمع لأنه كان كسيرة الكرمة من الفاض الصن الهوي سبيرت أمين. The Study Bible tells that Zacchaeus was blinded by the crowd as people are blinded by the whims of the masses, and because he was too short, like people who have physical and other limitations that get in the way of seeing. Those of you, in fact, I, I pointed out to uh, to Alan and to uh, Ziad, because they're tall, before the liturgy began, I said, if you're going to take communion, you have to kind of bend down, because I'm short. So if you're not short, you don't understand what it's like that you can't see for the crowd. 
When I was a little boy living in Brooklyn, sometimes my mother would do, to me it was a terrible, terrible um, venture. She would take me to um, Abraham and Strauss A&S, a department store, and if you that are from New York, know the store. I would recommend that you never, ever, ever go to one of these stores when they're having a sale. These were old buildings, and the elevators could hold about 35 to 40 people. Now, when you're a little boy or a little girl, and you get into an elevator with 35 or 40 people, you don't see anything except anatomy. <laughs> I also know that I was a boy, there was a, a place, a hot dog stand, believe it or not, I did used to eat hot dogs, and it was called Needix. And you were supposed to eat at the counter, but I was never tall enough to get to the counter. So I was eating like this over the counter. So unless you're short, you really cannot appreciate. And the beauty of being short when you get to my age is that you start to get shorter. <laughs> but we have to understand that in our lives there are things that are blocking our vision of Jesus Christ. We, look, we need to look above them and remove that things that block us, and they do block us. Time is a big blocker. Time is a big blocker. One of the reasons that I like to go to Italy is I love, I love the Italian Mediterranean mentality. Tomorrow, we get it tomorrow. We don't get it today, we get it tomorrow. If you go to Germany, or in the northern European countries, England, they're on time. I've always jokingly told my uh, compatriots in the Middle East that one of the reasons that the Arabs usually lose their wars to the Israelis is because the Israelis start on time. <laughs> they tell you 6 o'clock, and they're bombing by 6 o'clock. <laughs> the Arabs are still drinking a cup of coffee, have another cigarette. You know, come on. Time is a great blocker. Things that we're supposed to do are also great blockers. Got to get this done, got to get that done. For example, let me, let me ask, uh, I'm going to ask Jacob, so get ready to answer, give me an answer. Okay? All right? What do you think might be, might be blocking your vision? Is there something that you like to do that you spend time doing? Be honest. He's looking at his brother. Don't look at him. <laughs> Come on, we already know the answer, you know, so you're not going to surprise anybody. What is it? Playing. Playing games. Video games. They're a big blocker. Because we spend our time, and, and if time is so valuable, well, let me, let me ask, uh, I, well, yeah, I can answer Isaac. Well, let me ask uh, Kevin. Do you get homework every night? When you go to school, do you get homework? Okay. When do you do it? I don't know. When you, do you do it when you come right home? Yes. No. I will tell you honestly that I will admit to you, I hated homework. You know why I didn't like homework, Nikolai? I figured I already gave you six hours in school. Why couldn't you cover it then? I got to come home and do more of it. But because I knew it was hanging there like a, a like the, what do you call it, the, uh, the pit in the pendulum, the pendulum waiting, okay? It was hanging there waiting for me. So when I went home, I, I got it done, I got it over with. I wanted to get it finished. So things that we have to do, they block our vision. How many parents, I don't want to call uh, hand, uh, hands up, anybody, but I know many parents, one of the things that blocks their children and their vision of Jesus Christ on Sunday are sports activities. We've got to go to this practice or that practice or the other practice. Or other things in school have to go to, to band practice or have to go to uh, what do you know, cheerleading practice. How much better would the cheerleaders cheer if they knew about Jesus Christ first? They'd be cheering even more. So these things are things that we feel we have to do. We're coming, we're not there yet. I don't know what day of the week April 15th is, okay, but I have a feeling, in fact, I know it's during Holy Week. So there will be people that will not come to Holy Week. In fact, I can, I can figure out 11, 12, 13, 14, Holy Thursday. 
There will be people that will not be here on Holy Wednesday. And maybe, well, probably Holy Wednesday, because they got to get their taxes done. I don't wait that long, okay? But what I'm getting at is that we got to get the taxes done. we got to get this done. we got to get the social events. Oh, I, I, I would come to church for all the fun. And this is a phenomenon that was not around when my children were young. When my children had their birthday party, it was on their birthday, and it was maybe four or five other kids. Today, children's birthday parties are like a debutante continue. Parents spend more money on birthday parties for their children. It, it, it's really out of control. Because I hear from people, I would have come for that, but we had to go to so-and-so's birthday party. So all these things, they block our view that we cannot see Jesus because we're not concentrating on what's really important. It might be important to just believe my, my friends, my fellow parents. No matter if you take your children to every event, you're going to miss one and they will remember it. I, I went through that, my family knows that I went through the, uh, so the, the, the guilt that was put on me for years because I didn't go to uh, Little League games. I heard about that one, oh, you're going to my Little League game, you're going to my Little League game, you're going to my Little League game. And finally, when, when the person telling me was, um, was old enough, I said, you know what, you're right, I didn't go to Little League game. You want to know why? Why? Now, of course, I don't love you. I love you very much. I love you from the moment you were born. But I don't like Little League games. Oh, how could you? Someone said, how could you tell them that? Really? You should be more honest with children. I don't want to go. What's worse? Parents, this time you can put your hand up. How many of you, your children are learning an instrument and they go to school for it or a class and they have a recital? Put your hands up. Hi, you're going to find them. That's all? God help. I would have gone to Little League games, but I had to go to recitals. Your mother's recitals. Twenty children playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. Do you know how arduous that is? Especially if you're like, I'm the person focused on getting things done. I'm sitting there going through this. Of course, she's going to be towards the end because she's older. So I got to go through all these other little kids banging away on the telephone, on the uh, piano, or that other, what do they call it, a, a recorder? Yeah. These things block our views. They are good things, they are not bad things, but we need to put them into perspective because why? They shorten us. Even if we're physically tall, they shorten us. It goes on, he says, in verse 7. But when they saw it, this is the crowd of people, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. The story Bible says, We are all sinners, but so many only concentrate on the sins of others, blind to their own sins and shortcomings. Give you a good advice. Whatever you see wrong in someone else, look into yourself and see if there's any semblance of it in you. Any semblance of it. Look, when you look at others, oh, do we do this and do that? Do that. Think about, it. forget about what they're doing, because you can't do anything about what they're doing. Think about if any of that is in you, in any way, shape, or form, to any percentage, is it in you? Because what that will do is it will help you not to be judgmental or condemning of other people. If you only look for the wrong in other people, you will never see the right in them. Let me ask you a question. This one I'd like you to put your hands up for. Would all of you that are Orthodox Christians put your hand up? Did you notice I didn't put my hand up? I was at a retreat this past week, and I was telling some priests, I said, we need to stop telling people when they join the church, you are now Orthodox. And people who join the church, they'll tell you, I'm Orthodox. Or even other people that are members of the church, if you ask them what religion they are, they say, I'm Orthodox. Nobody in this room is Orthodox. 
You see, we need to understand the meanings of words. In the modern Greek, orthodoxo, it's two words. Ortho, meaning correct or straight, and doxa, meaning praise. Therefore, the word orthodox means correctly or properly praising God. Nobody in this room is all the time properly praising God. You would be better off to say, I am a member of the Orthodox Church and I'm trying to be Orthodox. So I told this to a priest, he said, oh, God, that's so much for people to think of. Think about it. How much time do you spend thinking about what's going on in Washington? How much time do you spend thinking about what you saw in a movie? How much time do you think about games? I know I was on the plane, the lady was playing a game, and I said to her, is that Candy Crush? She said, yes. I told her, I said, ma'am, the first time somebody asked me about my Candy Crush, I said, what flavor does it come in? I didn't know it was a game. I have nothing to do with game, I don't know about that. So Candy Crush sounds to me like something to eat. Do you, ever play? do you know what Candy Crush is? Yeah. Okay. For many people are seeking to be orthodox, correctly praising God, but it's a daily effort. It is not, we are not, God bless them and keep them well. We are not this type of Christian that we tell people, accept Jesus, come on up. I, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And they think they're done. It's not the way it is. There's no permanent salvation unless you are with the Lord. So therefore, being orthodox is a daily effort. So I told the priest, I said, we need to teach people that just saying I'm orthodox doesn't make you orthodox. Doesn't make you orthodox. But you have to think of what it means to be orthodox. Let me tell you something. With your, with your I won't say your permission because we're going to do it. I don't mean that as a, as a challenge. But with your cooperation. We need to learn more how to be Christians. All of you sitting here, I'm sure, believe in Jesus Christ. But we need to learn how to be better Christians. We need our children, we need our children to have examples. Now, if you ask Isaac and Jacob, what's your grandfather do on Sunday? They know what he does, right? Oh, he does. So Nikolai and Luca and Jason and Kevin, and all the children, they need to have examples. We are the example, my friends. I've told you this before, as parents, do you know, Jacob, that when I die, and I go before Jesus, you know what he's gonna ask me? What did you do to bring your children to know me? He doesn't care whether they had a nice house, whether they wore nice clothes, whether they went to all the practices, he doesn't care about whether they ate well or just ate. He cares if we brought them to know Jesus. That's all he cares about. Because he didn't come into the world so that we and our children could be materially rich. He didn't come into the world so that we and our children could be powerful or could lord it over people. He came into the world so that we would know him. And in knowing him, we would become like him. And finally. It says in verse 10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Surabal says, Jesus seeks only to save, but especially those who have lost their way. Too often the saved seek to ignore the lost and complain that they are not worthy of Christ. But he is the one who decides who is worthy of him. So we are called to seek first what is lost in ourselves. In ourselves. Is patience, forbearance, forgiveness, kindness, generosity, love. Is it lost in us? Before we point to other people, is it lost in us? We are very, very blessed, very, very blessed to have a relationship with homeless people. In fact, one of the priests up north, up at the, uh, the retreat, he said, how do you deal with all the homeless people? I said, we don't deal with anybody.
This is not a poker game. We relate. So before we point out what's wrong with other people, we need to sit and honestly ask ourselves, what's wrong with me? That doesn't mean that you're going to correct it wrong, but at least you know about it. At least you can make a commitment and attempt to try to change it. Thank God we're coming up to Lent. This is a wonderful time of the year for us to refocus. But let me tell you this. If you follow Lent correctly, and not just as a diet, but as a time of renewal, when you come to the resurrection, the Pascha, hopefully you will be at least one step above where you are now. But whatever you do, don't go back down. You're up that step, then the next length and onward, you go for another step. Because Jesus Christ did not call us to be Christians so that we could pat ourselves on the back. But more importantly, that we could hug the most Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen is intended to get our men together.
together to learn better, more fully, how we can be better Christian men, fathers, husbands, sons, brothers, uncles, godfathers. It is the most important thing that we as men can do after we see the one we So when we men get together, and I will be the lady will be me, I'm not going to get the lady meeting, if you don't need to tell you what I need to tell you. And with a team meeting, but it will be at the amen meeting. Gentlemen, sometimes people think the church goes too long. For those who love the Lord really, it's never long enough. Sunday is the Lord's day. So don't plan next Sunday at the church, you gotta go here, you gotta go. Tell them I'll get there when I get there. I've never known a party that I was invited to that ever didn't start without me when I got there. But <coughs> So they will start without you. So please, ladies, teens, and uh, young adults, uh, that's another area, but we'll get into that later. Also, I want to remind you that uh, we, sell, we have vespers every Sunday at the church if you're still here at 4.30. And during the week, it's very important, we're, we're changing a little bit. Every day, Monday through Friday, there will be two services here at the church. One at noon and one at 2 p.m. And in all honesty, this is these times we've chosen so that people, and we have people that come every day from the community. This is so that those people know that there is a service at noon, and the faithful who might be in the downtown area can come for the service at noon and vespers at 2 o'clock. We also have vespers at 5 o'clock on Saturday, and of course, the service that we have on Sunday. But also, I want to remind you, I'm sorry, there's so many uh, things to announce to take up. We have a fellowship downstairs. Fellowship is important because why we are not monastics. Mono meaning one. Number two, I, I like to come to you. I like to see you. And maybe I haven't heard a good joke. So I like the fellowship. And if there's food, we got the food. So when you go downstairs, us. We're going to eat fellowship, but we're going to come to a point after a while where we're going to ask everybody that is fellowship be to please join our teaching. We need, a, we have a lot to learn, and it's not just that we've been talking about a book. I'm not a big one for books. I've read books, but I believe in action. I'm not a, a contemplator. I'm a doer. I don't talk the talk, I like to talk to you. So when we come to that point, now there won't be after five minutes, because I'm not trying to keep anybody get captive. I'm truly not, I want you to say that. But I have a responsibility to God to educate myself and all of us to come closer. So if you don't want to say to that, that's fine. Okay? You can, you can, you know, you can sit there and do what you want to do. But when we come to that point, I would have hoped that you would all be participating in the teaching, because that is something that we will go home with. Like a child told me when we had that school visitation a couple of weeks ago, I said, why do you go to church, son? He said, to learn. So we are here to learn from one another. That's why it's a discussion, because we can learn things from one another. So our topic today will be what contributes to people being lost in our society. Father, Son, and Lord, we thank you for this. Experience, the best thing that we can do in our lives is the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the place in which we celebrate it, and to encounter you and to receive it unto ourselves, physically and spiritually. I ask Lord that you watch up here all of us, those who are here and those who are not. And bring us together in my worship and receive it once again. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Here's mine for this speaking of the Holy Spirit.